Welcome back to the field, friends. Today we are going to be working on some distance sidearms. So this is something that I haven't really ever put too much work into, but I feel like I have potential in. Um, especially after watching Tristan Tanner in Las Vegas throw his rives about 500 feet with uh, just a little bit of effort. It's uh, kind of convicting in the fact that it's like, dude, you have a tool that I think you need to start taking advantage of. So I've got a bunch of rives. I also have two graces, which I've really been enjoying throwing. And our goal today is to try and get 400 feet, okay? Um, I really think I can do it. I've hit like 380 before, and I wanna try and get some work done. Um, we'll talk about form and all that kind of stuff as I'm throwing as well, so that hopefully you guys can uh, get a little bit more distance on your sidearms too. One of the most important things about sidearms is getting that wrist cocked back. Um, you'll see a lot of people uh, start off with it back. That's what I tend to do, especially with like my approach sidearms and stuff. But having it cocked back removes that variable of, of as you pull your arm back, forgetting to cock your wrist as well. Because a lot of times if you just have it forward and you pull your arm back, then your wrist stays here. But if you can cock it back before you even pull your arm back, then you'll go ahead and remove that extra step that you might forget to do as you're throwing or whatever. So, my goal is to have that almost already cocked back as I approach and, and get my forearm back there. And then as I release and do my follow through, the biggest thing that I talked about in a video recently is the follow through with that uh, foot stepping out. So as you throw your sidearms and you release them, you need to allow your body to rotate forward. Just like when you throw backhands and you allow your uh, leg to come around and rotate, you need to allow your, uh, your body to do the same thing on your forearms. It's pretty easy to just stand here and throw like this, and that isn't allowing me to twist my body. So what you need to do is as you approach your sidearm and you throw it, you need to allow your body to continue that rotation and that momentum, and I can promise you that is going to make a big difference with your accuracy and your distance with your sidearms. Okay, so we have a little bit of a headwind which is going to make things uh, more understable. I've got five rives with me, a couple of first runs, and then a factory second one. Um, I bought a bunch of these when they first came out um, when I was up uh, for DDO last year. So uh, in the headwind, we should be able to throw these relatively flat and get them out to a good distance. Let's go ahead and grab these rives. Like I said, we've got five of them, and we're just gonna pump them. We're gonna see what type of flight we can get on them. I'm gonna give them a little bit of ante just so they can get a full flight. Okay, so way too high on the release there. That is not what we want at all. There it is, that's better, but still came out super wobbly, which is not what I want. We do not want that, that wobble factor which means that we want to make sure that we have a very secure grip as we're releasing this. All right, that one's a little bit better. Still probably only like 320 though. So I'm gonna try and give these more ante and maybe even a little bit more air just to see what type of flight we can get out of them. Oh, that one's a bullet. <clears throat> that one might be up there, probably close to 350 or so. Got the lower rive right here. Gonna do the same thing here, get it up in the air. <laughs> I mean, that one flew, but that was super inaccurate. All right, now I've got two graces. These I'm just gonna throw flat, and I'm not gonna give these too much effort either. Just gonna really try and get a good snap out of them. Yeah, look at the flight on that. Really good snap on that. Got another one right here. I'm getting some flutter in these, so I definitely need to work that out. But we're gonna go measure these, I think. Okay, so I hit 350 on one of those, um, which I know I can throw further. Uh, we are in a little bit of a headwind here, but I don't think that's gonna to be too bad because it's gonna make these a little bit more understable, which I'm okay with. Um, I realized that I was super bent over as I was coming up. 
to these. And I think that standing up a little bit taller and allowing myself to get that arm back and rotate is gonna be better than bending over like that. So that's one thing I'm gonna work on here. We'll see if we can get a little bit more distance. Try and get some, some nice full flights out of these. I really have to allow myself to finish the shot. Yeah, that's a smash, but it came out with a lot of wobble. That one was pretty good though. Yeah, that's a smash. Whew, keep pushing. Yeah, that one was really good. Okay. Yeah, we're starting to get warm now. All right, so we got a little bit more distance out of those. And um, when it comes to the throwing the rives, I need to make sure that I'm giving it kind of a low flex. I can give it a high flex, but a lot of times that'll make it stall out. I think the low straight golf shot is the one that I'm really looking for. Um, we threw these out to 370, or we threw two of them out to 370, and one of the graces went 370 as well. Um, I think that if I get a new distance record today, it's gonna be with the grace. Um, let's actually throw the graces first here. I'm gonna try and give it just the tiniest bit of hyzer with a good amount of power and have it flip up, maybe even turn over just a little bit and really, really push down there. Yeah, look at that thing. Oh, that was a smash. Okay, that's some really good distance on that one. See if we can get some power behind these rives. And I'm really, really trying to get my fingers in here. I don't want there to be any gap because the more area that my finger is touching, the more friction it can create, which is gonna create the spin and the rotation, which is what I need. That's a really good shot, but I gave it too much hyzer. <clears throat> Okay. Yeah, that one's gone too. If I can give it just a little more ante, I think I'll get a really good flight out of it. With this, this one's a little bit more beat in, so I'm gonna try and throw this one just like I threw that last shot. Look how low that is. Come on, stable up. Good ground action, that was an absolute smash. Yeah, really nice low release there. That one's probably up there in the 360s maybe. Well guys, we pushed this rive out to 408. So that's pretty freaking sick. And then we pushed this grace out to 406. Um, 408 and 406, I'm feeling good. I wanna try and pump these a little bit further. One thing that I'm realizing that is really important is to have a solid grip on the disc. You don't want there to be any like looseness or anything like that. You want it to pull out of your hand so that it generates all that speed. Um, also trying to not get them up in the air too much. Trying to get them on a nice golf shot straight is exactly what I'm looking for. I love these discs so much and I cannot wait to put more work into them. Let's see if we can get them out there further. So I'm recording these last couple uh, in just HD instead of 4K so that I can slow it down and we can really watch. And hopefully after the fact, I can talk about things that I'm doing wrong. I really wanna try and break 400 again. So we're gonna see if we can make that happen. I'm trying to throw in this grace. Again, into this headwind, gonna try and throw it on a tiny bit of hyzer. Wow, that's a beautiful flight. Keep pushing. Really gotta fight to stay underneath the wind here. Yes. Oh, that's a bomb. All right guys, so as, as per usual in this field, always dealing with some sort of wind, but that's okay. You know, that's a part of disc golf. Um, some takeaways for sidearm. You wanna have a really good grip. 
you want to make sure that there's pressure and that there's contact between your fingers and the discs. So that's a big takeaway. You want there to be just contact between it so that you have a nice smooth release. Um, you want to try and keep that arm flat and low. You don't want to release it nose up because you guys would see those gain air and then they stall out. But as I was rotating around on them and releasing them flat, they were getting really, really good, nice golf line shots to about 350, 370, which is ridiculous. Um, and then probably the biggest thing about sidearms is throwing and finishing, finishing with that leg out. So you want to get that release and you want to get that leg out. Those are things that I have found to help me with my sidearm game. Um, obviously I'm not Eagle McMahon, I'm not Tristan Tanner hitting 500 feet or anything like that. Um, but for me and my specific amateur sidearm, those things have helped. So hope that this video helped you guys out. Go out in the field, try it out. Try and have that good grip, try and uh, get some neutral discs. The graces flew unbelievably well for me. Uh, I just recently started throwing those and I love, or I just recently started throwing them on sidearms and I love them. Um, check out a grace, man. They're so good. Uh, but yeah, thank you for watching. Love you guys. I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.